Going down. Good. All right. uh, just reviewing Kansas State. Obviously, uh, you know, suffered a hard-fought loss against a quality uh, Power Five and uh, Big Twelve opponent. It was a tough and physical football game, uh, closely contested for four quarters. And we knew in a, in a game like this uh, that the margin of error was going to be small. I think Donald Rumsfeld said that. Lack of precision is dangerous when the margin of error is small. And the kids played hard, but, but as we reviewed the film, you know, we, we pointed out, and I think I'm going to mention this after the game, that there were one or two plays in each phase uh, that we didn't make the plays and they didn't make the plays that kind of dictated the outcome of the game. And, uh, you know, really lost momentum with that kickoff return. You know, made the field goal to go up 24-17. And right away, you know, flip it around and they returned to make it 24-24. And I think there's about a little over uh, 12 minutes left in the game there. Kind of had a little bit of back and forth and never really able to, to regain it. Uh, and the, it, was, it, was, it was disappointing in that regard uh, that we weren't able to finish it off. Um, you know, and certainly, it is, you know, it is a cliche, but you, you win as a team and you lose as a team loses a team and players and coaches that, that if we're all going to bask in the praise of a victory, that we're all going to share in the blame of the loss. And first and foremost, we want our guys to be thumb guys and not finger guys and looking in the mirror, not out the window. And, and, and the first thumb always goes back to me to make sure that I'm doing everything necessary uh, to put the kids in position to be successful. And we indicated that uh, in the team meeting and talked about that. Uh, we watched the film. We made the corrections uh, yesterday and we moved on to Kentucky. We're in the process of game planning that game now. Um, you know, looking at it uh, from an overall perspective of three games, I think there's a lot of uh, positives going on right now. Obviously, on offense, uh, Colin Hill leads the uh, leads the SEC in rushing. Uh, I think explosive plays as well, and as second in uh, for I think second in the country for power five backs for yards. Osiris Mitchell playing at, at a very high level right now. I think he's ninth in the conference in receiving. Uh, you know, over 200 yards, three receiving touchdowns already. I uh, like the progress of our pass game for the first two games. Obviously took a step back a little bit in this past one. Uh, defensively, believe that Errol Thompson and Brian Cole are playing really, really well. And uh, Jace Christman made a career-long uh, field goal uh, this past week. So, uh, and also playing a ton of freshmen and first-year players uh, for a myriad of reasons. But, uh, you know, I, I think the guys that have been asked to do that uh, have stepped up very well. Uh, from a student athlete of the week standpoint, uh, this is DeMonte Russell. And uh, Dylan Lawrence, uh, from an injury standpoint, try to get out ahead of that a little bit for you guys to help you out instead of being peppered with questions that I really don't have the answers to. Uh, Nick Gibson uh, continues to be day-to-day -day, uh, with a lower body. Uh, Darian Parker continues to be day-to-day -day with a lower body as well. And then Tommy Stevens, obviously, with the upper body is day-to-day. -day. And those guys all participated in practice on Sunday in some form or fashion. And then Cam Dantzler with a lower body uh, is still day-to-day. -day. Okay. All right, moving on to Kentucky, uh, obviously the uh, SEC home opener. Uh, encourage our fans to come out. Going to need a big crowd this weekend. Uh, Bulldog Bash on Friday night and a 3 p.m. kickoff at Davis Wade Stadium. Uh, certainly excited to, to kick off uh, you know, the season in, in conference play. Uh, looking ahead to Kentucky, uh, obviously Mark Stoops is a head coach. Overall record of 38-40 uh, and 40 at Kentucky. I uh, began coaching in 2013. I uh, was the coach of the year last year, led Kentucky to its third 10-win season in school history. And won their first New Year had their first New Year's Day uh, bowl appearance and New Year's Day bowl win in 20 years, uh, and he was the uh, defensive coordinator at Florida State from 2010 to 2012, and transformed their defense from uh, 108th in the country to second nationally. And I have a ton of respect for Coach Stoops, you know, being a Youngstown guy, Midwestern guy, and you know, obviously comes from a great coaching family. But I think he's a great person, and, and, and think the world of him as a coach as well. Eddie Grand's our offensive coordinator, kind of a uh, well reputed reputed. Uh, spread guy, uh, does a real nice job. You know, they mix in 11 and 12 personnel, a little bit of unbalanced, and have shown some wildcat with Lynn Bowden, uh, averaging uh, 32 a game, uh, 430 yards, 185 rushing, 245 passing. Uh, the quarterback's a pretty interesting kid. You know, had a chance to, to sit back and watch the uh, Florida game. Sawyer Smith transfer from, um, uh, from Troy. You know, a little bit different than the Terry Wilson kid. I think he's a little bit more of a a, uh, a passer than a runner, but as a guy who can beat you with his feet, and I thought he made some some good decisions and some good throws throughout that game. So he was a kid, you know, that, that was pretty impressive. Very very confident. Uh, kind of have two running backs that they play. Uh, AJ Rose, uh, good vision, long strider, more of a, more of a linear kind of one cut guy, and, you know, more of an eye back. And then Cavassier Smoke, uh, you saw him in the Florida game, really really explosive, quick, uh, a little bit better change of direction. But those two guys really, I think, complement each other very well. 
and, and quite frankly, run behind a very big, physical, and aggressive offensive line. You, you look at their guys across the board, they average anywhere between 6'5 and 6'7. I think all of them are well above 300, uh, getting up into the 322 range. So uh, I've been very impressed with the size and the physicality and the athletic ability of their offensive line. And obviously we mentioned uh, Lynn Bowden at the wide receiver. Yeah, I recruited Lynn out of high school. I was at Penn State from Warren G. Harding. And uh, he's, he's just a multifaceted guy, you know, get him the ball in the pass game, get him the ball in speed sweeps, you know, plays a little bit of Wildcat quarterback. It's obviously in the return game as well, so he's very, very dangerous in space. Uh, the defense coordinator is Brad White, you know, base three down, one and two high zone, uh, giving up 23 a game, uh, averaging 390 yards, 122 in the rush and 267 in the pass. You know, up front, Josh Pascal, uh, 10 tackles, three for loss and one sack this year, long, physical, rangy. Kind of in the uh, the mold of uh, 41. He was a first round pick. Josh, Josh, yeah, that guy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> kind of in that mold. Plays that same position. Uh, uh, Cash Daniel, this the linebacker number 56. Ten tackles last week versus Florida. Team captain, emotional leader, and and you look at him and he, and he is he is all over the field. He is 100% motor, 100% of the time. And uh, you know, a guy I really respect his game. And, you know, it, it, he affects the run game. He covers in the pass game. You know, he runs sideline to sideline. You know, he gets downhill. So I, I've been really impressed with him for two years. And you know, he's he's obviously the uh, kind of the emotional leader of the defense and a guy that gets them going. So he's really impressive. And on the back end, Cedric Dort, uh, the defensive back, smooth, athletic corner, playing with a lot of confidence. I believe he's the one guy on the back end that, that returns. Uh, that's not a new guy. Uh, so he's been playing really well uh, as of late. Uh, Dean Hoods, the, uh, the special teams coordinator, multiple formations on punt to create mismatches. A uh, pretty simple kickoff and a uh, kickoff return scheme and sound on punt return. Uh, the punters average at 51 a punt, 50.6 uh, net, which leads the country. 85% touchbacks on kickoffs. Then kickoff return, they're averaging 23. Uh, we talked about the punter, Max Duffy. And then uh, Lynn is the, uh, the punt returner and the kickoff returner as well. I believe he had a couple for touchdowns last year in the return game and you know, continues to do that this year. He's a very, very electric player, you know, one of the top, top playmakers in the, in the SEC. And the keys to victory will, will always be the same, you know, how, how we uh, you know, approach it during the week from a mental standpoint uh, and a physical standpoint and uh, you know, how well we play and how well we execute on game day. So, uh, you know, talking to kids after practice yesterday, you, don't, you want there to be a certain uh, level of, of – uh, disappointment for the loss, but at the same time, you can't let one game beat you twice. So we, we allowed them to be upset about it. We allowed them to, you know, kind of, you know, make the corrections and do the things we needed to do. But when that got done in practice, we moved on to Kentucky. I think there was a good energy, a good bounce in our step, and a good understanding that, you know, our singleness of purpose of taking it one week at a time. And, you know, we've gone 1-0 twice, and we've gone 0-1 once, and we got to put this game to bed, uh, understand the things we did well, continue to do them, understand the things we did poorly. And work to correct them and, and get on to a, to a uh, you know our first SEC game against a, a great great opponent. So, any questions? Get a mic to you. Start, Tom. <coughs> Two questions. The first, Joe. Just a, at this point in Game Four, obviously with injury suspensions. Has there been any talks of redshirting guys at this point in the season? Obviously, a lot of young guys have got. Some yeah, we were actually we review that on every every Monday. So guys who are either true freshmen or have a, a redshirt year available. We kind of put them into into three categories: green, yellow, or red. Guys, we know we're certainly going to utilize the uh, the year of eligibility and play them. Guys who we're not quite sure and uh, you know possibly could go with four, but based on as you mentioned injuries and, and other circumstances, you may ha have to activate them. And guys that are for sure red shirts, uh, so it, it it does change you know on a weekly basis, kind of based on what the need is per position. Uh, so. Uh, <coughs> that's something we got to address you know, every week. And just going off of that, any true freshmen at this point that have been decided that they will be redshirted? Will be redshirted? Yeah. I, I don't have a list in front of me, but there are, there are more than a handful that uh, you know are going to are going to be redshirted as this year. As of now, and like I said, it could it could change, but as of now, they are. Steve, coach, after uh, reviewing the film, it, it appeared there be some, some special teams pressure on punt coverage there. Yeah. Uh, protections there was there any consistency with any of that and, and is that correct it, it happened twice and it's correctable you know it, it was the left tackle on our uh, on that side of the line you know stepping down it wasn't really too much of an all-out rush as it was just a, a fundamental and technique thing of stepping down and staying square and not opening the gate letting that guy get up inside of there 
So uh, from a protection standpoint, we worked on a bunch of that in the individual time yesterday during practice. So that's something that's, uh, it was very correctable. There were a couple times too where they, the tight end showed block and then kind of leaked out into the pass pattern. What, what did you kind of see on those blocks? Yeah, one, one time they overthrew the guy and uh, we were in man coverage on that thing. And it goes back to, you know, we talked about heading into the week and I think a little bit later, that for as well as they run the ball, uh, they're going to try to put you in conflict at the second and third level and create eye violations where you're playing your, your run gap, but you're also responsible for pass. And what happened on the one you're talking about is the tight end fanned out and blocked uh, the corner, which activates the guy who's in coverage on him into the run fit, and then they leaked him out late. Uh, so it was, it, was, it was a very good play design. So uh, you know, that, you know, that eye discipline on the back end and making sure your eyes are staying on your keys, you know, that, that's what led to, to the tight end being open on that play. Well, obviously, it's early in the week, Coach, but uh, where is Tommy like, with his comfort level with the shoulder, and, and how do you kind of prepare that for the rest of the week as far as his practice availability? It is. It was way better yesterday and today and heading into tomorrow than it was at this point last week. What did you see in simple terms? How was that shoulder affecting his throwing motion? Not much in the first half. I mean, 7 to 13 was moving the ball around pretty good and, and, and had a couple drops. and. You know, it just got a little bit, a little bit weak on him at halftime, and he wanted to try it out. And we wanted to see how it went, and then it just got to a point where we felt that, uh, you know, it was, you know, we don't want to leave him in the game when he wasn't able to, uh, you know, perform at 100%. So we had to move on. You mentioned last week uh, if he couldn't go, you were preparing four guys. What's this? What's the schedule like? Are you still preparing Schrader and, and KT and, and Maiden? Uh, we want to get all those guys ready to play in the game if, if uh, you know, the situation dictates. But you know, certainly as I mentioned after the game, the, the KT. Is still, you know, rehabbing from a lingering, you know, upper body injury that was that, it, that occurred during the course of camp, and you know, we, we want to be fair to him and make sure he's fully healthy before we continue to, to kind of work him into the rotation. But certainly between Tommy Garrett, you know, we got Jalen some reps last week, but it, as KT continues to, to heal up, and uh, you know, he, he's performing better in practice. You know, we want to, we want to feel more confident about him as well. And uh, in what ways, if any, have you seen Kentucky's offense change since they've had to make the change at quarterback? Not as many design quarterback runs as they did with Wilson. And that's just, you know, one game. Past two games, you've had to play two quarterbacks, obviously. How important would it be to, to have one, whether it is yeah, Steve or Green? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Like, how, how vital is that? How valuable is it to, to have one guy play throughout the duration of the game? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think just from a consistency standpoint, and, and when you look at, and I'll say, it took a, a minor step back. I mean, we had a bunch of different guys catch passes, but we fell off from a, from a uh, completion percentage standpoint. That, that, that continuity in the pass game, when you talk about the three elements, you know, protection, uh, you know, route, read, throw, and catch. And I think that's where, you know, as we talked about it, you know, there were times where, where the protection broke down a little bit. I mean, we only gave up two sacks, but there was a little bit of leakage on some of the third down stuff. Uh, we had people open and maybe missed a read or two, or uh, had people open and threw it accurately and had a couple critical drops, you know, or uh, you know, we misread it or, or had an overthrow. And I think that that lack, as you mentioned, that lack of consistency with who's throwing the ball and who's making the reads, particularly when the, the, the second guy in there is, is a true freshman, uh, you know, you'd, you'd love to keep you know one guy in there the entire time just to build off all the positive things we did in the first two games. Just last week, obviously, with Cam banged up for the Kansas State game. Obviously, Jerry Allen and Martin have played a number of snaps yeah. the last couple weeks. But how comfortable are you with them, those guys in the secondary and just holding things down when a guy like Cam does go down? You're talking about the uh, the freshman? Yeah. Yeah. First, I, I think you know, Tyler Williams has done a really, really nice job. And, and, and most Smitherman, you know, outside of one or two plays, I think he played physical. He played fast. Uh, you know, did, did, his, did his job really well. But, you know, uh, you know, Jarion and, and, and Martin Emerson, and you look at a couple other guys, as I mentioned, across the board is, either true freshmen or first year starters, Javante, Quinston Sharp getting in there, you know, kind of doing some nice things. But, you know, Coach Shoop and Coach Buckley even remarked when we were watching the film the other day that, that the young guys aren't making very many first year mistakes. You know, I mean that they're maturing at a very fast rate. And I think a lot of that goes back to their ability but also their desire uh, to perform well at a high level and their preparation that goes into it. So uh, you know those are two guys that, that uh, we've been very pleased with thus far. Kind of on the quarterback front, and I guess with red trading too. Just with Keaton banged out, not that you guys are rushing him back, but like, how important is it to get him back? Just with Garrett having played two games already, and maybe wanting him to use that red shirt here. Yeah, well, the, honestly, the red shirt is the last thing on our mind because that's not accurate. But but there's there's so many moving parts right now of, you know, Tommy's health, you know, Garrett, you know, 
going in there and being the guy, and quite frankly, for a true freshman in the game that he's played, I think he's performed at a very, very high level. And you talk about the immediacy of him playing now and helping the offense, and that's part of the thing, as you mentioned, with the pass game, too. You don't want to put it all on a true freshman's back and have him, like I mentioned, throwing the ball over the yard. I think he rushed for 80 yards and, you know, had, had some nice completions. Uh, but going back, back to, your, to your question, we, uh, you know, we want to make sure that the guy who's on the field is the guy that we, we need to perform at a high level. And if that, if that affects a redshirt, it affects a redshirt. But we got to do what's best for the team first and foremost and for the individual second. And, and all the kids understand that. That's been communicated to them as well. And kind of going off of that, if uh, Garrett said that Tommy might have rushed back. I don't know if you yeah. feel the same way. But if it, that's the case this week, if Tommy isn't 100% and you don't feel comfortable throwing him out there, yeah. is there a situation in which you would consider giving Garrett his first start? Yeah, I mean, we, we actually talked about that at staff meeting this morning that, you know, we're engaged where, and, and I won't I would necessarily categorize it as rushing back. I mean, you can get into the semantics game, but Tommy was very, very motivated to play and wanted to come back and, and help the team because he's a competitor. And, uh, you know, I think he's earned that right as a fifth year guy to, that he's healthy enough to play to be given the start. But uh, it's also it's also kind of you know where is the the the, um, the line of demarcation where the practice reps and the preparation and the continuity you know matter the most on Saturday during the week. So figure out who the starter is going to be, and making sure that guy gets all the appropriate reps with the guys who are going to be in the game for the upcoming week. So that's kind of where we're at with that. Okay. So what you mentioned uh, Terrell Buckley uh, helping those young. Secondary guys. Yeah. He's another guy on your staff that has some NFL playing experience. How important is that having a guy like that that's been that's played at the highest level to be on your staff, kind of like Michael is on the offensive side? Yeah, I remember the word. It brings instant credibility to the room, and probably more so when the guys you know, are going to be elected, inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame and had a, had a remarkable NFL career. And uh, Buck's got a great rapport with the kids. And, and more than anything, there's guys that can tell you how to do it, and there's guys who can tell you how to do it based on what they've done. And when you go out and watch him during an individual and his fundamentals and technique, you know, it's, it's not just from going to clinics and learning as a coach throughout your career. It's a guy who's done it at the highest level in college and in the NFL. So uh, I think to, to have two young corners like that playing at a high level, I think that's a you know, compliment to Buck and to, to, our, to our defensive staff as well. I hadn't seen Alec Murphy in these first three games. Kind of what's his status right now? Yeah, Alec is going to be uh, – he, he's not going to be – he's out for the season. How, how does that affect the, the running back? I saw Malik Deer had to take a rep at yeah. running back. Uh, you know, we, we'd like to get Nick back as quick as we can. You know, ideally, it would be like it was the first game and a half. That, that Kyle's going to be the starter, Nick's going to be the backup, and then you, you utilize Lee uh, as necessary. Uh, and, and, you know, Malik played, you know, tailback all throughout high school and was kind of built in that, that body type and understands very, very smart football IQ, so uh, we kind of pressed him into duty a little bit at running back last week, got in for a snap, and you know, did, did real well. But I, I think he's capable of doing those things at tailback. Coach, uh, Garrett Schrader's been on television a lot as a player for that, that play. I yeah. know as his coach, you, you like to fire, but you, you also think about self-preservation. But, but what does that do for the locker room? What does that do for his teammates when they see him go out there and make an amazing play like that, even if he comes up a little bit short? Yeah, you know, first and foremost, the correction is on fourth down, you can't run the ball. you, you, you got to you know, find a spot to throw it and give a guy a chance to catch it. And I mean, obviously, he came up a yard short, but, but he understands. And, and the thing that I've liked about him since I first started recruiting him uh, until now is the guy's a dang competitor, and it, it means something to him. So in terms of, uh, you know, he doesn't need the team to rally around him because they believe him already, but when, it, when, when his, his uh, you know, teammates see a guy that's willing to put his body on the line and, and do something like that, uh, you know, to try to win a game, I think it, it continues to build the respect that they already have for him. Statistical, Coach, uh, I know the three games, um, a little bit behind last year's pace, I think, in terms of total yardage and things like yeah. that. But um, given the moving parts and, and probably a little bit uh, the teams that have improved and there's been a different opponent thrown in the first three games, just where do you feel like through three games uh, as compared to where you were a year ago? Are you still pretty confident in, in the direction the offense is headed? And, and uh, just your, your thoughts on, on where the offense stands in three games. Yeah, sometimes it's best to use statistics for, for support, not illumination. I think Coach Browner said it like a drunk uses a lamppost. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> that, uh, I mean, you look at last year's opening. I mean, you played Stephen F. Austin in the opener, and they're a quality one double A team. But I don't think necessarily that the, the people that you're looking at relatively in comparison, 
I mean, I think Louisiana won again. Are they undefeated or, uh, or, are they, or one loss maybe? And they've, they're, they're a much improved defense. Southern Miss has been one of the top defenses in the country, and I think we did a really nice job there. And, you know, ran for 200 plus yards against against Kansas State and just struggled to pass a little bit. So statistically, it may say we're a little bit behind. I mean, I think we're 30 a game, a little bit of 33. But I, I don't think from a uh, a player standpoint, a coach standpoint, or just a pure you know kind of naked eye observation standpoint that I think we're we're light years ahead. Or because of the balance, you know what I mean. And, you know, I know that the, the 62 points and the five or six touchdowns against Stephen Austin may skew that a little bit. I think it was 700 yards, but uh, you know we play our FCS at the end of the year now, so you can tack that on when we get to that game. Uh, going back to the running backs, we saw Kareem Walker enrolled at the university yeah. last week. What is his status with the football team, and he, is there a timetable to get yeah. on the field? He, he, he's with us. There, there, there's just one more kind of administrative uh, hurdle he's got to get over to, to get onto the field. So he, he's in meetings, he's around, he's doing all those things. We just got one more small thing before he gets on the field. It's been a while, I understand. I'm, I'm as <laughs> impatient with it as you are. Joe, you mentioned on Saturday, obviously, two or three plays with the difference in Kansas State. You see Kentucky had a pretty good run game last week. Yeah. Um, what was that like watching that? Yeah, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, you're watching Kentucky and you're like, you look at the okay. box score and obviously yeah. Kentucky and the rough fourth quarter against Florida, you know, obviously every SEC game is a must win, but yeah. it almost feel like, you know, expecting two teams maybe a little desperate on Saturday just basically in terms of, you know, where loss could really shape how the rest of the season goes out. I mean, it's tough to say we four is yeah. a must win. But. Yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily categorize it as, as desperation, but it's certainly, you know, two teams coming off of, of uh, tough losses against quality opponents, and, and they had it, you know, down to the wire with an opportunity to kick the field goal, and unfortunately for the, for the, poor, no pun intended, for the poor kid, you know, the, the thing went a little bit wide right and could have been a difference in the game, and, you know, uh, you know and, I, and, and I'm sure Coach Stoops, you know, is a little bit disappointed but a lot of bit angry about the loss just like I am. I mean, I'm not sitting here saying that any of us are pleased that we, we had a close game against a, a power five opponent that's undefeated. We're, 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 we're not happy about it. Okay, and, and I guess in terms of motivation, I don't think necessarily desperation. I think you're going to see two teams that play close games. They're a little bit upset, a little bit angry about the outcome. They're going to come loaded for bear and get ready to get this thing back on track. But I understand what you're saying. Yes, sir. Coach, you mentioned having recruited Lynn Madden out of high school. Just what kind of matchup does he present? And obviously with the secondary is as good and deep as it is, how much that comfortable are you guys dealing with that? Yeah, if I remember correctly, I think he came in second for the Mr. Ohio voting. But... Uh, you know, played almost primarily quarterback in high school on his highlight film. You go back and look at his huddle, but did, did a bunch of different things. But the word that comes to my mind is, is dynamic and versatile. That, that he could do a ton of different things and ways to get get the ball in his hand. But I like Lynn. Lynn's, Lynn's an awesome kid, and had a chance to talk to him a little bit after the game on the field last year. But uh, hopefully, we can we can do what we need to do to slow him down. I don't know if you necessarily stop him, but uh, yeah, he's one of the top playmakers in the SEC. Uh Going off of uh, Tom's question, last year you guys started 0-2 in SEC play. This is a chance to start 1-0. Yeah. How big would that be just to get the first one right away? I, I think it will be big, j j just from a uh, kind of a bounce-back standpoint. But but I, I think the thing that at least I'll say I've corrected, I'll say corrected but kind of changed from a mentality standpoint is we're more singleness of purpose oriented right now than we are long-term goal oriented. It's important to us because it's the next one. And because of the construct of this team, we, we need, you know, and a bunch of different reasons. We, we can't be focused on, hey, this is SEC play or whatever. It's it's the game that we play we play this Saturday. And uh, I think it's important because of that, but obviously, you know, to get a, a head start, a jump start, to get, get a win in your first SEC game would be a, a good uh, momentum builder heading into SEC play. Joe? Obviously, I know some circumstances might can be commented on, some can't, uh, but Lee Autry played in the Southern Miss game and – didn't play in the two the sandwich. Is there any clarity you can give to his availability and as far as why he may have played in the Southern Miss game and not, say, the K-State game? Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, availability we give on Saturday. There are reasons, but none that I care to comment on now. Coach, second half, third down efficiency on offense is terrible. Yeah. yeah. And so, gotcha. and, but it was different factors. You had to drop with Zuber and you yeah. had an air pass from Garrett and you took a shot on third and six. When you yeah. go back and look at that film, 
what, what do you kind of attribute that to? Do you look at play calling? Do you look at execution? Or is it just a combination of all those factors? Yeah, you, you look at everything. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, the one with Isaiah, you know, we, we had a little, a little mesh route with a sit on top of it, and we, we got him open, and Garrett made a great read there. Uh, you know, the, the one to um, uh, Osiris on, on the third and kind of medium plus in the red zone. And, and that's the thing we're trying to teach a young quarterback. We, we, we have him in the huddle on the sideline. We say, all right, we like our one-on-one -on -one matchups. It's going to be man-free. They're going to be in a single high look. And, uh, you know, Osiris has been playing well. We're going to throw the go ball, do anything but overthrow him. And, you know, we overthrow him. So we do it. And, and, and that happens. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a freshman you know, in, in a game. Uh, you know, in that first experience. So uh, it, it's a little bit of everything, making sure we're on the right call, and then when we do, you know, making sure we protect, making sure we're accurate with the read and the throw, and, you know, making sure we catch it. So a little bit of everything. I think we were, we were Louisiana, we were good on third down, you know, uh, Southern Miss, eh, and then this one, not so much. So we got to be better on third down. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Oh, no, I'm just, hey. Just to, like I said at the beginning, we, we we're excited for our fans to come out. And I know it's going to be on SEC Network. You know, huge, huge, huge home opener. I know our kids are, are are energized and galvanized and excited. You know, for the great home field advantage that we're going to provide. And you know, our kids are. You know, we're going to battle back. We're, we're we're you know fighting tooth and nail. We understand. You know that this one game ain't going to define the season, but uh, we're, we're 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 excited to get back on the field. So we want everyone to come out and support us for this one. Okay, Hail State.